evolution or revolution is a huge question. We figure about all the time we're building companies. Do we evolve? Are we building something that's a revolution or is it an evolution? Um, I, I once created a, a, a company that the vision was to change professional photography forever. It was a revolution. However, we lost the focus of the business fundamentals and decided that that's a problem. You can't have a revolution if you don't focus on the core business. And our next guest um, is, going, is Isaac Saldana, who's a serial entrepreneur and in 2009 co-founded SendGrid, which has helped companies send over 7 billion emails. This is one of those companies that I really wish existed in 2003 when I started my last company because we had to manage all that and create that from scratch. Isaac is right here. His mission is be happy. And he's going to talk about evolution or revolution. Where is the best place to start from? Isaac, come on up. Take it away. Thanks, Thanks. Isaac. Hi, guys. So uh, my name is Isaac Saldana. I'm the co-founder and president of SendGrid. And uh, today I'm talking about, like, where's the best place to start when doing your startup? Uh, should you bring new thoughts and new ideas to your new field so that you can disrupt that? Or should you use whatever you know uh, and do a startup based on that? But before I start, um, can you raise your hand if you're working in a startup or if you're a co-founder of a startup? Okay. So out of those, leave your hand up if you're also an engineer. Cool. Thanks. So first thing is, startups are hard, right? So that's it. I'm done. No, I'm just kidding. Um, there are so many highs and lows that you're going to go through. Um, and you could potentially not have the outcome that you, that you really want. So um, in addition to that, there's a lot of time that you spend on these. So um, it's really important to choose the, the next thing that you're going to be working on um, wisely. So when you're doing a startup, you're going to trade things. So you could be like, you could trade money so that you can fund it and either get some equity out of that or things like that. But the, the biggest thing that you trade um, in a startup is time. So this is time that you could potentially, this is time that you're going to spend when doing a feature, testing, talking to customers, validating your ideas, and stuff like that. And uh, this is time that you could potentially be doing something else, right? A hobby, spending time with your family, resting, sleeping, uh, things that we usually skip when doing a startup. So um, it's really important um, to ask yourself, um, why do I want to do a startup? Like, why is it that you want to do a startup? Is it? the f financial motivations? Is it that you just want to learn from a new field or from uh, an existing field? Um, or is it that you just get the satisfaction of solving problems uh, and he helping the world? So it's really important for you to know that. The next thing that you should ask yourself is, who am I? So you ask yourself, who am I, not who, who's Isaac? So, um, are, are you uh, an engineer and like building things? Are you in finance, marketing, legal? Um, and take that even further and ask yourself, would I want to run a company like Apple, like Facebook, like Walmart? Um, and if you're an engineer, and I'm just going to use an engineer as an example, but it could apply to any, anything. Um, ask yourself, for example, Apple. 
if you created the first iPad, would you, could you move away from that and could you focus on just managing teams or do you want to go on and build the next thing? So that's really important um, to know. And these are, these are um, hard questions and these are decisions that you need to take um, when doing this. So I want to talk to you about uh, the way I make decisions. And this is, this is really important because if you understand this framework, what I call the decision framework, it's it just really small, but it makes a huge difference. It's like when you when you face with the, with the, um, a difficult decision, just go back to whatever your decision framework is um, and, uh, and go from there. So my decision framework, it's composed of four things. So the first thing is, Am I going to get more resources out of this? And resources, uh, they're based on whatever context you are. So if you're in a game, uh, am I going to get more gold? If you're exercising, am I going to get stronger, faster? Um, in a startup, it could be a more salary, more shares, uh, um, liquid assets, or whatever it is. The second thing that I consider is relationships. And again, all these, these four things that I consider are based on context. So relationships, things are like, in a business would be more business contacts, access to other businesses, and a personal level, it's better relationship with your wife, with your kids, um, at work, uh, awesome co-workers that you can um, uh, interact with. Third thing, and really important, is knowledge. And the reason why it's really important is whatever you learn now, no one's going to be able to take it away. No one. Until you die. No one's going to be able to take away that. And not only that, but you could actually transfer this knowledge to the people that you really care about. Friends, family, kids. So, when you're taking a decision, consider the knowledge that you're going to get um, out of that. And last thing is, am I going to be happy? You could get resources, you could get knowledge, um, but you can be unhappy with that decision. So, for example, I'm an, I'm an engineer, um, if I would be managing Things, even if I get resources um, and knowledge, uh, I wouldn't be happy. So, um, so that's another thing to consider. So, who am I? Me, Isaac. So, I want to give you some background on myself. So, I'm, I'm an engineer, like I mentioned. Um, got a major in computer science and another major in electrical engineering. And I love building things. So, I've had four startups before Sangren. Um, above the limit, it was a web hosting business and consulting business. Um, eRigid, it was a, a company I launched um, that was pretty similar to Amazon EC2 uh, before Amazon launched. Um, so later that year when I launched eRigid, Amazon launched. Um, I didn't stop doing that because of Amazon EC2. It's because I moved on to the next startup called Embed. And that is, had a pretty similar concept to Task Rabbit back in 2007. Um, and I'll talk about the outcomes on, 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 on these startups uh, uh, later on. And the last startup was uh, a company called NotPaul. And it was uh, a company where fans would generate events um, for bands before it happened. So if there was enough demand for a band in a specific venue, we would make that happen. When doing the startups that I mentioned, one of the things that I learned is that I couldn't say I'm the best in the world at one of these things. So, and that's one of the things that I really want you to uh, take from this talk is, ask yourself, can I be the best in the world at whatever I do? And a lot of that comes back to passion and knowledge. So, 
could be, it, eventually it's going to come down to knowledge. So if, if you're passionate about something, you're just going to get so good at it. You have to get good at it if you want to be the, the best in the world at. So, so knowledge is uh, something that is extremely important when you're, when you're creating something. So I wanted to run this experiment. Um, and because I'm an engineer, you're going to notice how geeky I am. Um, so I use a score from 0 to 100. And think of it like grading in school. So anything below 50, it's kind of like an F. So it's not a good score. Um, so 60% would be a D, 70% a C, 80% a B, 90%, and above an A. So, um, so at above the limit, didn't get resources. I actually had negative resources, so ended up losing resources. Hardly any relationships. Um, tons and tons of knowledge. Um, happiness. Um, so if you look at the happiness um, column, um, I didn't realize how important happiness was until uh, I started Sangrid. So just that's why it was uh, 60s before Sangrid. So happiness wasn't as important as it is now for me. Um, so in, in Above the Limit, um, I was OK, happy. Uh, what I do it, I again, definitely. So this is the outcome. I wanted to ask myself, based on these four things, what I do is start up again. And the answer is for Above the Limit, yes. For e-rigid, broke even, no relationships, tons and tons. And I, I learned so much. Um, OK, happiness. Would I do it again? Definitely. Um, then bed, negative resources, um, no relationships, hardly any knowledge, um, no happiness. Would I do it again? Probably not. Um, not Paul, some resources, um, no relationships, hardly any knowledge, hardly any happiness. Would I do it again? No way. And Sangrid, um, the, so I get the resources to do whatever, uh, whatever uh, I want to do, tons of relationships, tons of knowledge, super happy. Would I do it again? Yes. And one, one pattern that you should see here um, or that you should know about is that at Sangrid, I applied the things that I learned from Above the Limit and eRigid, and this is about scalability and hosting. So one of our um, ways to target the market is to go to ho uh, hosting companies, and we, we have partnerships with companies like Rackspace and SoftLayer and things like that. So that these are the things that I learned when, um, uh, when I was doing Above the Limit and, and eRigid. So I used the knowledge that I had uh, to build Tengrid. And Dembit and NotPaw, I, I didn't learn much that I could have reused on, um, um, on Tengrid. So this is the geekiness. And uh, so I wanted to feed those inputs to a machine learning formula that is called linear regression. And, uh, Actually, if you know how this works, I would love to talk to you after the presentation, but I just wanted to put the equation there so that you, it's true. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you the results I got uh, on this experiment. So it was, uh, it was pretty fun. So for the ones that are familiar with this formula, the x matrix is just the, 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 the inputs. The, the y vector is just the output. So I'm trying to predict. So the y, it's the, the, the outputs that I want, and I'm trying to predict based on more input, like if I would do a startup again or not. So it, it was really interesting. The, so I asked myself, if I would do a startup where I knew I wouldn't get too many resources and too many re relationships, but I would get a lot of knowledge and happiness, computer, would I do it again? And the computer said, oh, probably not, which was really interesting. I would, I would think it was, it was going to give me a high score. Um, if I didn't get um, any resources, but tons of relationships, tons of knowledge, uh, tons of happiness, would I do it again? Definitely. So that's expected. Um, OK. 
Okay, so resources, no resources, relation, a lot of relationships, a lot of knowledge, happiness, no happiness. Would I do it again? Yes. No resources, relationships, no knowledge, um, and tons of happiness. Would I do it again? Probably not. Um, and, and I just fed this model a bunch of, bunch of different inputs, but resources. So if I became rich and uh, no relationships, no knowledge, no happiness, would I do it again? The answer is no, as expected. But this is weird. Like, I wouldn't expect this. It's a lot of resources, a lot of relationships, no knowledge, no happiness. Would I do it again? The machine said yes. I was a little bit disappointed, but I'm just publishing the results. <laughs> um, again, and I think I have a couple more. So a bunch of resources, a bunch of no, uh, relationships, no knowledge, no happiness. I mean, tons of happiness, would I do it again? The answer is no. So if you look at how important knowledge is when doing something, um, um, it's something to consider when, you, when you're making a decision on what field to, to move into. And I think this is the last one. So tons of resources, no relationships, tons of knowledge, no happiness. Would I do it again? This is yes. So the reason why I showed you this experiment is not to show you, like, not, not to teach you machine learning, but I just wanted to show you three. Uh, I just want to tell you about, I want to put, make three points. The first one is that whatever you know, you can actually use it to uh, create something fun. In my case, I'm an engineer. I, uh, I'm a geek, and I just wanted to use a machine learning experiment to, to make this presentation fun. Likewise, whatever you're familiar with, you can expand on it and innovate. So it's not necessarily because you're not an engineer that you can't just do crazy things. You can definitely innovate on any space that you're uh, most familiar with. Um, second point I wanted to make, and if you didn't notice, is that I didn't get the outcome that I expected after the FID startup. So it's really important for you to continue um, and persevere on, what, on whatever your goals are. Um, and the last thing, and the, the most important, is that there are no future data points. And this is something that I'll, I'll repeat. There is no future data points. And what that means is that you can't use data from the future. You can only use data from the past. And, and this usually goes back to the stuff that you learned, the experiences that you've had. So um, I, I strongly encourage you to use um, your knowledge and foundation to innovate on, on, on new startups. Just to wrap up, everything that you see around you works because someone decided that it should work that way. You guys ha you have the power to change that. So use your knowledge, use your per perseverance, and uh, kick some ass. Thanks for listening. <laughs>